Hey, it's welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to teach you about the vector and parametric equation of a line in 2D and 3D. So let's begin uh, with a line in 3D. Um, so we've got the coordinate axes in uh, green here, uh, but otherwise we've got this purple line, which is our line in 3D, and we've got a point A on our line. Um, this here, this uh, maroon vector, is what's called the position vector for the point A on our line. A position vector, recall, is just a vector drawn from the origin to a point. So here we've got the position vector for a point A on our line, and we need a point on our line um, in addition to something else I'll say soon in order for us to write the vector or a parametric equation of a line. Yeah, that other thing that we need other than a point on our line is what's called a direction vector, and that's uh, this blue vector right here. Now, um, I have the direction vector pointing towards the right um, on, our, on our line, but yeah, one way to get a direction vector is if you know two points on your line, right? You can subtract their corresponding coordinates and be able to get Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to teach you about the vector and parametric equation of a line in 2D and 3D. So let's start by considering a line in 3D. Uh, so in uh, green, we have the coordinate axes, and then we've got in purple here, our line in 3D, and we've got a point A on our line here, uh, whose position vector is drawn in maroon here. Yeah, uh, remember, uh, a position vector is just a vector from the origin to a point. So this here is a position vector for the point A on our line. And in order for us to write the vector or parametric equation of a line, uh, we need a point on our line. In addition to a point on our line, we also need what's called a direction vector. And this guy here, which is supposed to be blue, is our direction vector drawn on the line, yeah? Okay, with those two handy, which is a point on our line and a direction vector, then we can get to any point on our line. Uh, let's say we have a random point x, y, z right here, or let's say we have another random point x prime, y prime, z prime here. What I'm claiming is with a point on our line and a direction vector, we can get to either of them, and here's how. Well, if we're trying to get to x, y, z here, uh, we can use the position vector of the point A to jump on our line, so to get to our line, and then we can scale this direction vector, make it longer, and between the two, which is by the sum of the position vector for the point A on our line and a scaled version of the direction vector, we can get to um, this point X, Y, Z, this random point X, Y, Z. And it's clear that to get to this other random point X prime, Y prime, Z prime, we can still use the position vector for the point A to jump on our line, but then we'd have to scale this direction vector by a negative scalar to get to uh, this other point on the left, yeah? Okay, cool. And the way I've drawn my um, direction vector here, direction vector as opposed to position vector. But yeah, the way I've drawn my direction vector here, it's clear that I would have to scale it by a positive scalar greater than 1 to get to um, x, y, z. And again, a negative uh, scalar to get to x prime, y prime, z prime. Hard to tell if I have to make it bigger to get to this other random point. But okay, uh, with this said, um, I guess the visual could be um, explained again using vector addition. If I draw the position vectors for the random point x, y, z and the random point x prime, y prime in black here, right? And what we're saying using vector addition is that uh, this uh, vector here, the position vector for the point A plus a scalar times this direction vector will equal this black vector here which is the position vector for the random point x, y, z, and similarly for this um, other random point on our line. And so I just showed you that we can get to any random point on our line, whether it's to the left or to the right, uh, wherever you're sitting. Okay, <laughs> anyway, um, so in component form, the uh, vector equation of a line can be written like this, which is um, this here, the position vector for a random point x, y, z will equal uh, the position vector of a point that you know on your line plus a scaled version of your direction vector. Um, all right, and it could be written more succinctly like this. Um, yeah, okay, cool, cool. And um, now uh, we could see that uh, if we want to, we could write uh, the components x, y, and z as follows, right? x will equal um, 
a the the x coordinate of uh, the point a plus alpha um, a scalar times uh, the x component of the direction vector and then similarly y will be like this and then um, z will be like this now if we use these three equations and solve for alpha in each of them then we can write uh, these three equations and setting the alphas of these three equations here at the bottom equal to each other we could get to what's called the parametric equation of a line in 3d right here this is called the parametric equation uh, it's also sometimes in some books called the symmetric equation but yeah either it will work for me just communicating all right uh, and um, if we uh, do the analysis in 2d let's first take note that the succinct version of the vector equation of a line in 2d or 3d is like this here right uh, where this here is a position vector for a point A on the line, and this here, U, is the direction vector, and I'm supposed to have an arrow above this R, which is the position vector of a random point on a line, but yeah, okay, you see it here, and uh, I had to fix that too, but forgot to fix this, but whatever, like, basically, there's supposed to be a vector arrow on R is all I have to fix, otherwise, this video, I think, is pretty good, what do you think? Um, all right, we'll find out. Um, uh, thumbs up if you like it anyway anyway so so now let's do the analysis in 2d and all that would change in 2d is that like instead of xyz uh, we have xy and uh, similarly the point a has two coordinates and therefore the position vector for the point a on your line has uh, two components um, and similarly the direction vector just has two components but otherwise uh, everything else is the same and so the um, symmetric or parametric equation for a 2d line would look like this and what's awesome is we can get from this symmetric or parametric equation of a 2d line to the good old point slope form of a line that we know from algebra all we have to do is solve for y in this equation here first to solve for y in that equation we multiply both sides of this equation by uh, u2 and then um, the y component of uh, the direction vector that's u2 right and then we get this and from there it's clear that we could write either of these two um, isolate y here or not isolate y and here where i where y is together with minus b this here remember is the point slope form of the equation of a line in 2d and so they should be very familiar and this is almost a slope intercept form right but yeah uh, here we've isolated y, but yeah, either of them is going to be the good old algebra equation of uh, a line. And what's cool and interesting is that this here, u2 over u1, is the slope, as it should be. Because the vertical component of our direction vector divided by the horizontal component, that should be equivalent to uh, the slope, rise over run, right? Um, and so it is, u2 over u1 is... M in the good old uh, equation of a line but yeah I'm done here and I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed this video and next will be the vector equation of a plane and after that I'll make a video showing you how to convert from the vector equation of a plane to the Cartesian equation of a plane yeah all right cool keep watching hope you enjoyed this take care